Hello and welcome to Mr. Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr. Paul and if you're new here a very very warm welcome. If you're a returning visitor nice to see everybody here again. I hope you've all recovered from the festivities now and back into uh, a normal mode. Uh, the first recipe, uh, sorry, the first video of 2023 uh, is not a recipe, it's really a, a method of doing something. Uh, and it's, I take no credit for this, by the way. Uh, this is uh, taken from a website called Recipe Tin Eats, uh, which I follow. It's run by a, um, a young lady, a very nice young lady called uh, Nagy. I don't know her surname, I'm very sorry about that. Nagy. She's in Australia uh, and she has a wonderful dog uh, called Dozer. Uh, and I have to admit, uh, my love of dogs really took over when I saw this website because I fell in love with the dog long before I fell in love with her recipes. <laughs> Although they're good recipes, she's a good cook, she's a good photographer uh, and uh, I follow her all the time. So the credit is all down to her, so I will put a link up to her website for there for you to look at. Um, it's it's a, a foolproof method of producing crispy, crackly, crunchy, crispy, crunchy, crackling on a piece of belly pork. Belly pork is my favourite part of the pig, by the way. Um, it's the tastiest, it's the juiciest, it's the tenderest part of the pig. It's beautiful. Uh, and in fact, it's the most versatile part of the pig, simply because uh, being in the, in the pork butchering trade and the bakery trade all my life, we've always used it for making sausages, We've always used it for making pork pies, simply because it's got a very nice balance of lean and fat. And if it's cooked correctly, uh, it's not a fatty piece of pork like a lot of you people imagine. It's beautiful and tasty. So I'm going to show you Nagy's system of making foolproof, crispy, crunchy crackling on your piece of belly pork. Okay? So, I'm just going to go into the kitchen when I finish my tea and I'll see you shortly. Right, here's the piece of pork. It's a nice piece of belly, it's got nice lean and fat. A nice smooth skin and the most important thing as I've mentioned earlier this must be dry and not scored that's very important it's not scored okay turn it over and we're going to put a little oil on this side of the just a very small amount on this side of the pork just wipe my fingers and then we're going to sprinkle a little salt on there. Now, you can if you wish, just let me sprinkle a little salt on here. You can if you wish, flavour this here. You can put on fennel seeds, crushed fennel seeds, or you can use uh, five spice powder, anything you want on there. I'm not going to, I'm just salt and peppering it and then we're going to turn it over and put it onto, so let me wipe that, put it onto this piece of foil like this with the meat side down and the rind uppermost, okay? Just make sure that's nice and dry. Now what we're going to do next is very important. We're going to fold this, just strengthen it by folding it out. This is a double piece of oil by the way. We're going to fold this like that so it comes to just the top of the lean and leaving the rind showing. So let's do that again. See how much we to turn over there. A little more. There we are. And we'll do the same with the sides now. Just fold the sides in. Because what we need to do, we need to keep that as tight as we can up to the pork, like this, as tight as we can. 
because that's going to keep all the juices inside it's not going to let the juices run out into the roasting tin okay so just make sure the edges are squashed so the fat can't escape that one's not right let me just fold it in a bit there we are now now once you've got it like that and the salt and the oil on the underside of it the meat side here on top which has to be dry by the way we're going to put the smallest amount of oil on very tiny amount probably only about half a teaspoon and rub that all over right to the edges and then about half a teaspoon of salt which we're going to rub all over again right to the edges because it's the salt and the oil that we're putting on at this stage that's going to create all those little crispy bubbles at the end of the cooking process but not yet so we're going to put this now into our roasting we're going to put this into the roasting tin now like that making sure the foil is right up to the meat we don't want the meat to dry out so it's going to actually cook in its own juices that's going in the oven now at 140 degrees centigrade I did say centigrade don't please write to me in a minute and say did you say centigrade or Fahrenheit I only use centigrade measurements so it's 140 that's low roasting temperature for two and a half hours halfway through that process we will be doing something with the foil I'll show you later but set it for two and a half hours at this particular moment so we've now got the pork out of the oven it's been in one and a half hours and what you can see now is we've got a big gap between the foil and the pork the pork has shrunk and what we need to do now is to pinch this a little bit more this corners to keep it very very close again to the little well you can see that it's very hot I can't tip it up to show you can you see that so we're now keeping it very very close again to the pork so it's not drying out at all it's cooking in its own juices so that's going back in the oven now for another one hour so here it is now it's been cooking for two and a half hours it's nicely roasted gently roasted but the top is still soft as you can see it's not crispy at all in any shape or form now you can see it's sloping down a little bit to this side it's very important at this stage that we get this rind level so I'm going to take a, a bit of foil scrumpled up and I'm going to pop it under that corner there just to try and just to try and level this up a little bit okay there we are that's pretty level now I think a bit too high just a minute there we are now that's going to go back into the oven now which I've cranked up to 240 degrees centigrade by the way that's very hot 240 degrees whether you're using a fan or not that's the temperature it needs to be and it's going in the oven for just 30 more minutes so here she is straight out of the oven and I think you can hear how nice and crispy that is it's a lovely piece of meat I'm just going to there isn't that absolutely crunchy delicious and succulent I'll just show you a little close-up of what if I can there it is it's beautiful and the crispy crackling goes all the way across right across I'll just take a little bit there and just let you listen when I 
pop it in my mouth. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Well, that's all I have time for at the moment. If you've enjoyed the video, go underneath, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, do so please. Press the little icon, which is a bell at the side of the subscribe button. That means when you click on that, YouTube will tell you every time I put up a new video. Well, that's all I have time for this time. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, go underneath the video and give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Share it with your friends on, uh, on social media. And if you have any questions, comments or um, suggestions, leave those in the comments underneath as well. I do read every single one. So, it's Mr Paul saying bye for now and I'll see you next time. Bye.